the Cro-Magnons, giants of prehistory and masters of monumental engineering. Peering into the mists of prehistory, we discern figures as monumental as the structures they erected. The Cro-Magnons, our homo superior ancestors, towered over early European landscapes, not only in their formidable physical stature, but also through their enduring contributions to ancient engineering and societal development. Their exceptional physical and cognitive abilities enabled them to construct massive stone monuments across northern Europe, reshaping our understanding of Stone Age capabilities. The tallest of the human line, the Cro-Magnons, synonymous with the first modern humans of the European Upper Paleolithic period, displayed remarkable physical traits. With an average height of around 666 and a weight of 260 to 300 pounds, their robust builds were complemented by brains about 15% larger than modern humans. These enhanced physical and neurological features were crucial, empowering them to manipulate their environment and undertake monumental construction projects. Yet, why is Cro-Magnon height so often underreported? Several reasons account for this. Many Upper Paleolithic remains are incomplete, so long bones are often missing or damaged. Classic height equations were derived on modern populations and can misestimate prehistoric statures. Mixed sex and juvenile samples pull down averages. Museums historically focused on skulls rather than long bones, leading to missing data. And even when reconstructions are attempted, scholars err on the conservative side. Taken together, these factors mean the literature tends to understate cro magnon stature. Correcting for them reveals a population of extraordinary size, males averaging 6.4, 6 vic 6, towering over later farming societies. Tools of the Titans, weaponry and heavy implements. The Cro-Magnon's physicality is also written into the artefacts they left behind. Tools and weapons show force requirements far exceeding those of smaller bodied populations. The Neolithic Power Axe. The Ahenside Tarn Axe from Langdale, with its preserved wooden handle and massive stone head, is a case in point. Unlike modern axes, it had a heavier stone head, a heavier greenwood handle, and a short, thick grip, clearly designed for big hands. Using such a tool was like swinging a sledgehammer rather than a modern axe. It placed huge stresses on the wrist and forearm, requiring an estimated 30 to 50% more strength than today's standard felling axe. For monument builders, this mattered. Such tools made ditch digging and timber work vastly quicker than the antler pick model allows. With waterlogged soils and heavy duty wooden spades, working rates may have been up to, to eight times faster than academic reconstructions suggest. The Mir Heath Bow weaponry tells the same story. The Mir Heath Bow, dated around 2700 to 2600 BCE, is a wide limbed flat bow whose design yields exceptional efficiency. Reconstruction suggests draw weights exceeding 100 pounds, well above casual hunting needs. Even elite medieval longbowmen rarely surpassed 90 pounds. Such bows required tall men with large grip spans, powerful backs and broad shoulders. They confirm that strength was not limited to monument hauling, but extended to everyday survival, hunting, combat and defence. Why this matters? These tools were not toys. They demanded and rewarded size, grip strength and resilience, Bones show unusual robustness. Monuments show construction at a giant scale. Tools show force requirements matched to Cro-Magnon physiology. Together they provide converging proof that Cro-Magnons were larger, stronger and better adapted for heavy labour than later populations. Quantum of the Solstice monuments as human yardsticks. Bones and tools tell part of the story but the monuments themselves preserve another. Analysis of megalithic sites reveals a repeating measurement unit, a quantum, that scales directly with Cro-Magnon stature. Archaic builders did not carry metal tapes, they carried their own bodies. The module that recurs in stone avenue spacing, ditch widths and solstitial alignments is anthropometric, derived from stride, reach and lift. And crucially, the module fits a body plan larger than modern humans. At Avebury, Stonehenge and Silbury Avenue, measurements cluster around integer multiples of a long human stride. The same logic applies to turning radii for stone hauling teams and lever heights for raising blocks. The coherence is hard to dismiss as coincidence. It looks like a standard, and the standard looks big. One of the most compelling clues comes from a unit we still use today, the foot. A modern foot is 12 inches, 
but the average human foot is nearer 9 to 10 inches. A Cro-Magnon male standing around 6x6 would naturally have a foot length of roughly 12 inches. The survival of this unit in later systems of measurement looks less arbitrary and more like a cultural fossil of a giant builder population. In effect, the monuments are a tape measure left in the landscape. They show that plans were set out not with abstract numbers, but with a human yardstick, a yardstick belonging to a people who averaged 6'6 six, six in height. Moving stones like pebbles, Stonehenge, Karnak and Avebury were not symbolic follies. They required hauling, lifting and balancing blocks of 20 to 40 tonnes. For cro this was feasible because of raw strength, bone density and endurance. Their musculature, built by survival, matched or surpassed modern strongmen. Robust skeletons allowed sustained strain. Daily life meant walking 40 miles carrying loads, a baseline far beyond modern norms. What looks miraculous to us was within reach for them. Masters of water and stone. These giants were not just strong, they were ingenious. LIDAR surveys reveal that many so-called dikes were actually prehistoric canals built to transport goods and stones by water. Reed boat catamarans capable of carrying multi-ton blocks fit this picture far better than dragging myths. Their astronomical awareness linking monument alignments to solstices and lunar cycles also ties into this. Tides are governed by the moon. For master navigators, sky and water were a single system. The diet of giants. Why were cro magnons so large? The answer lies in diet and selection. High protein game, fish and shellfish, wild plants dense in micronutrients, no processed foods, no cereal driven stunting. This was the optimal evolutionary diet combined with natural selection that favored the tallest, strongest survivors. When farming arrived, average stature actually shrank. Farmers created civilization, but Cro-Magnons created the monuments. Cro-Magnons versus modern strongmen. Today's strongmen stand tall, often 6'3 to 6'8 inch, weighing 300 to 450 pounds. But they are outliers trained for short bursts. Cro-Magnons were an entire population living this way. They were able to drag 800,000 pounds in real world settings, capable of 40 plus miles a day under load, and unlike modern strongmen, could sprint, climb and fight. Their bones were denser, their joints tougher and injuries less frequent. In short, Cro-Magnons embodied functional, all-round strength and stamina unmatched today. Why the Academic Shrinking Act? Why then are they still described as about our size? Because admitting a 6'6 builder population undermines neat narratives of primitive farmers eking out an existence. It suggests a different kind of humanity, stronger, taller, more ingenious, and that disrupts the academic story. Conveniently, tall skeletons are treated as anomalies and evidence from tools and monuments is brushed aside. Conclusion, giants who shaped Europe. The legacy of the Cro-Magnons is not confined to bones in museums. It lives in the colossal monuments still standing, in the tools that require giant hands to wield and in the very units of measurement we still use. Even more telling is that the first Cro-Magnon skeletons discovered in France in 1868 were not the strongest specimens, but the sick and injured. Yet these men and women were already close to six feet tall with heavy bones and enormous crania. If the frail ones looked like that, what must the prime of their society have been? They were not small tribes dragging stones with antlers. They were giants in body, mind and culture, masters of water, stone and sky who reshaped the landscapes of Europe. Cro-Magnons were not just like us. They were more.